Hello everyone and welcome to my studio. This is Karen Margulis here and I am excited to be back here on YouTube with another video demo. I've been away for a while but I have been very busy making content for our Patreon group. So if you like what you see here please be sure to give a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel because I will be doing more this year here on YouTube but I also invite you to join us over on Patreon. I have over five years of content so that's I don't know, over three, over 400 videos, maybe even more, 500, and uh, lots of lessons. We have a great community and starts at $4 a month, uh, and your support allows me to keep doing this. So I really would appreciate you checking it out. Now, today, what I want to share with you is a very, very easy way to start a pastel pen. Uh, pe pastel painting. I was going to say pastel paint pencil. But we want to start a pastel painting. It's a great way to kick off your new year. Whether you're new uh, with pastel or to the pastel medium, it, or if you are a seasoned uh, veteran with pastels, this is a great way to approach a painting, especially when you're not sure what to do with that blank piece of paper. I use it all the time. It allows me to simplify my subject in, and paint in just six easy steps. All right, sounds good, right? Well, I'm going to show you how to do it. So come closer to the easel and we'll get started. All right, let's start off with our reference photo. I've selected a simple reference photo that um, I'm able to simplify in just a few big, simple shapes. And that's what I strive to do with my uh, initial blocking of a painting is to just be able to ignore all the detail. So ignore the grasses and branches and twiggy things and just make shapes. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. The paper that I'm using today is an 8x10 piece of Lux Archival sanded paper. I love this paper uh, for especially wet underpaintings. Today we're going to do a simple dry wash underpainting or block in, but just know that Lux Archival really takes wet media very well. Um, and now let's have a look at the pastels that I'll be using for today's painting. Okay, so this box of pastels is Terry Ludwig, and this happens to be the Floral Landscape set. And this is a set that I curated for Terry Ludwig a few years ago, and I, you can tell, use it all the time. And I, I can paint more than flowers with this set. It's just a very uh, uh, well-balanced set of values and uh, color and intensity, so I love using it. And... I'm going to be using a few hard pastels here. These are new pastels, but any harder pastel uh, brand will work, and this will be for the initial block-in. I have a piece of pipe uh, insulation foam that I'm going to use for that dry wash, and of course just a pencil to do the initial block uh, drawing. All right, now let's come on back. And Before I start the demo, I wanted to go over those six steps. Six simple steps to a pastel painting. So number one, we're going to do a light drawing. We're going to just draw in those simple shapes. We're not going to get involved with too much detail, if any detail. Just to uh, block, show me or remind me where those shapes are. Then I'm going to block in all of the dark shapes, and we'll talk more about that as, uh, as I do it. Then I'll block in the light shapes next. And whatever is left, I'm going to fill in with a middle value or middle value pastels of some sort. Now, this whole idea here, so two, three, and four, is to create a foundation for the painting. A simple kind of abstract design of dark and light, uh, insert some colors, and that's kind of the foundation, and you'll build the details from there. So in other words, I fill the entire piece of paper with pastel. Then I will either uh, rub it in, do a dry wash, or I might do a wet wash or a wet underpainting. All right, once we've done that, we're going to build the layers and add our details. So we'll decide how uh, abstract we want to keep it or how uh, realistic we want to keep it and that's how we'll determine how much detail we'll add. But we start with that simple foundation. Once we have got the level of detail we're happy with, we sign our painting. And that's it. Six simple steps. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm looking at my photo here and I see some things that are not really necessary. We have branches coming in and a bush coming in here and I'm going to ignore that because that's not important to my story. Um, so what I am going to do is ask myself, is this painting going to be about the sky 
or about what's happening on the ground, which is more interesting to me for this painting. And in this case, the sky, mm, kind of boring, but I really love the light, uh, you know, on the, on the landscape in this distant uh, piece of marsh. So that means I'm more drawn to the foreground. So I'm gonna actually uh, raise my horizon line. So I'm gonna just quickly draw a line to indicate the horizon line. And then I'm gonna draw those simple shapes. So all of these trees become one shape, kind of like a, a rectangle, very simple. I'm gonna extend it to include these lower ones. And these actually go below the horizon line. So there's that line. Then we have another line of trees in the distance. Notice that this line of trees does not go all the way to the end ends about right there and there's yet another layer of trees further back those are going to be a little bit lower so we have three layers in here but they're still simple shapes now we have all of this foreground stuff now I could just leave it like this and leave it as a big shape but I want the viewer to be able to get through all of this grass to come back into the distance so that they can work their way through the painting so in order to do that I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to just make a very light line to remind me that I need to pull the viewer through all this grass. Okay, so that we'll talk more about that in just a minute. But there's also some water here, which I like. So let's go ahead and just kind of block in that water shape so I don't forget to put it in when I'm blocking in the painting. All right, so that's it for the simple drawing. Now we move on to step number two, blocking in the dark shapes. Now, technically, what I like to do is uh, a value-based thumbnail, and I work on the value thumbnail to start this process. But it, in order to talk about that, that would make this video go on for probably longer than you want to sit. Uh, so this is one of the things I dive into in a great detail over in the Patreon group. But it is important, but I'll just kind of uh, simplify it for today. What is the darkest shapes? They're going to be the upright planes. So these tree shapes are the darkest shapes. And I'm using a, a dark blue. This happens to be a new pastel, but any harder pastel will work. And you still want to have what I like to call a light touch. A light touch will allow you to build up more layers. Will not fill the teeth of the paper as quickly. Now I'm going to go uh, and do an additional area of dark first underneath this body of water and then I'm going to darken this area where I made that line. I'm going to call this the foundation pathway. I, I see horizontal bands in this particular photo. Um, those could potentially create fences of grass so I want to kind of zigzag our way and you see how they're darker so that's why I'm darkening this area just to to create a pathway leading the viewer back into the painting I am going to go ahead I know I said I wasn't going to do detail but I love this dark blue and it works really well for these uh, bare trees I'm just going to throw them in there all right next what is next number three block in the light shapes all right, so the light shapes, now that would be the sky. The sky is always the lightest value. Now when I squint, I see this really bright uh, or light yellow where the light is hitting the dried grasses, and that's fairly light, but um, so that is another light shape. But the sky is usually always the lightest. Now, I could go with the local color, meaning green for the trees, yellows for the grasses, blue for the sky. But what I like to do instead is block in my painting with colors that are not the local color. So that very first layer, I'm going to choose another color. I'm going to cover it up most likely with the local color of blue, but this will give the blue something to play off of. It, it, it will make it more interesting. So I'm not going to use local color for this foundation layer that I'm putting in. So this light sky and then what do we have? We have that water shape. The water is reflecting what's up in the sky so I'll use that same pink pastel for that. Now number four, fill in with middle values. So I need to choose middle values for all of the areas that I haven't cover, uh, filled in yet. Now here's, here's, the, uh, here's my thought process here. I like to have 
pastel on the entire painting before I start adding detail. So that is why I'm going to fill everything in and not just start uh, working on trees, for example. So I need to choose colors for these areas. Now, for the grasses, I decided I'm going to choose some uh, violets, some red violets. And the reason why I'm going with that is because there's a lot of yellow in the grasses, and if I use the complement to those yellows, I think it might make for a more interesting um, effect on my grasses. So I have a few of those middle values. This one's a little bit darker, so I'm putting it on that foundation pathway. These are some nice red violets. How do you know if you have a light enough touch? You know, I like to strive to get a light touch. If I can still see the, the paper, uh, then I know that I have a light enough touch. The minute I uh, press too hard, I can no longer see the paper. Here, I'll give you an example right in here. That's too heavy for an early layer. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, Michael is my um, camera person and he reminds me to say, if you're not familiar with what I do here, my paintings absolutely go through an ugly stage. I'm actually going to use this pink for that bright light. Remember we said that was super light back there? I'm um, going to use the same pink. My paintings go through an ugly stage. Meaning, you'll look at it here right now and maybe in a few minutes and think, ah, I'm, I'm changing the channel because there's no way she's going to get out of this. You know, this is ugly and she really doesn't know what she's doing and I'm going to change the channel. But I encourage you to stick with me because like I said, we've got to build up from the ugly stage and then uh, gradually add the detail. Now what did I just do here? I did not pull a hard pastel for these distant tree lines. I don't want it to be as dark as this, and I need it to be a cooler color. That gets into a whole nother video with, or lesson or month of lessons on creating depth. So choosing this uh, blue-gray here and an li even lighter uh, gray allows me to create a feeling of depth. Now that was a softer pastel, but I still was able to use a light touch. Okay, now I'm going to move on to rub in this first layer. And you might think, well, is that really necessary? Um, and technically, no, it's not necessary. But when I'm working on white paper, I don't like the little white bits of paper to peek through. So I rub everything in. So excuse the noise while I rub everything in. And by the way, when I'm rubbing things in, I'm, I tore that pipe insulation into pieces. And I, and I actually remind myself that I'm painting with this piece of pipe insulation. So if something I feel needs to go vertical or horizontal or fluffy or, you know, depending on what it is I'm painting, I will um, make that happen. So like for example, the areas in the distance, I, I like to paint with horizontal lines. But as I come forward, closer to me, I then change to um, vertical, up and down. Because we can start to see the fronts of the grasses, whereas in the back we're looking at the tops. The other reason why I like to blend in this first layer the way I did here is because now I have an out of focus underpainting or block in, whatever word you want to use. And I now have the foundation for the painting. And I can start in with my pastels and go to layer uh, number five, which is building my layers and adding detail. And if you get some of that on your, uh, some of the pipe insulation on, this paper is pretty rough, just tap. Never blow on a pastel painting, it just puts the uh, pastel dust in the air. All right, first things first. Um, when I start re, uh, adding more layers, I'm going to start by reinforcing the dark values. Makes it easy. Just reinforce the dark. So this is a dark blue, kind of like what I already used, but it is the softer pastel. I still want to use a light touch, so I know I'm using a light touch if I can see that underpainting color peeking through. If I don't see it anymore, then I know I'm pressing too hard. Now, I will press hard. I call that shouting. And I will shout. 
with my marks. But usually that's when I know I'm not going to be making any other marks in that particular area. I'm adding another layer of dark, again with a light touch. This is a dark red violet. Why? Because I want to have my darks built up in several layers so that they can be more interesting. So let's see if I want to go for another layer. Let's just keep it simple today and keep it to two layers. Then I'm going to go with the local color. What is the local color? Those trees are green. So I'm going to start with a dark green. Let's see. I'm using a light touch and I'm not adding detail yet. Detail is coming. I've got another dark green, but this is a bluer green, so I'm going to put it on the shadow side. Which reminds me, I have to make a decision where is the light coming from, because that's going to help me determine the light and the shadow side. And so I'm going to just look at the photo and say, yeah, you know what, the, the looks like the right side of those trees have a little bit of sunlight on them, so I'll put my little sun up there just to remind me. And now before I move on, I see that there's some bushes kind of in the front of these trees that have some sunlight on them. So I'm using a lighter and warmer yellow just to make some marks to suggest that sunlight. Now I could do more with the trees. In fact, one thing that I will do before I move on is remember I wasn't going to put in any um, detail too soon. But I do need to indicate where some of those trunks are. So I, I've taken that hard pastel back out because it is a great color and value to do these tree trunks. And I have to be mindful that I don't have soldiers all lined up, right, when you're doing your tree trunks. It's very easy for us to just line them all up in a row. So we want to avoid that. And I see that there's some light on some of those trunks, but we'll get to that. Okay. Um, I'm reinforcing the darks. I did that. That's fine. I'm going to move on. The next thing I do is reinforce the lights. And oftentimes that means I'm going to paint the sky. And the reason why I do this uh, early on in the painting is so that... Um, I can set the mood of the painting. It tells us what kind of day it is, uh, what the light source is doing, where the light is coming from. So um, painting the sky early on is my go-to. The other thing is if I'm putting painting the sky and some dust falls, I, I'm not ruining anything that I spent a lot of time on here because I didn't get here yet. Um, so sky next. But before I do the sky, I'm actually going to do these two bits of, of distant land because then I know how far to bring down my sky. So I took the same blue-gray that I used and notice what I did. I made a few marks in between some of the tree trunks because what I'm trying to do is establish those layers and you can see just those few little marks allows these trees now to come forward because we've got this distant landmass behind it. And then we have this other area, I'm gonna make it, I think that's the one I used. This is gonna be lighter because it's further back. And I'm gonna add a touch of light on those distant trees, but it also has to be in the blue-gray family because it's back in the distance. All right, let's do the sky. Now, I made the sky pink. Everything's pink. It's kind of interesting. So it actually is giving me, um, the opportunity to keep this kind of a, a pinkish, moody uh, feeling, or I could go with the local color, which is a blue sky, and I think I'll do that just to show you what I mean. But be open to the possibilities that your first layer or underpainting brings you, because a lot of times you might end up with something unexpectedly interesting that you might want to keep. So be open to that. So I took a um, kind of a middle value blue, kind of light, because the top portion of the sky is going to be a little bit darker, and it's going to get lighter and warmer as we go to the horizon. So I'm gradually getting it a little bit lighter. Now what I have to do here is when I come to the trees, oops, um, get a piece of tissue here, because what when I, uh, I want to carve into this 
tree line so that I can get a more interesting silhouette, right? I don't want it to look like that rectangle. Remember we started off with a rectangle? Well, we don't really want it to be a rectangle. It's, it's trees. We want it to feel more organic. So I'm taking the pastel and bringing it down into that tree line just to break it up and make it more natural, creating what we call sky holes. And if I look at my photo, I see that this section of the, of, I'm going to make that a little bit darker. This section of the trees um, is pretty well broken up with sky. <clears throat> Sky holes, that's another lesson, but they typically follow along the, the larger branches. And a lot of times with sky holes, I have to go back and forth, put some in, and then cover some up with foliage, like kind of poke some in here, and then I'll come back with the foliage to finish those. Okay, our sky's going to get a little bit warmer, so I'm going to use a warmer blue at the bottom of the sky near the horizon, and I'm pulling it up gently up into the sky so I don't have um, distinct layers. We want it to feel natural. And look at that pink. I love that pink glow that's at the, um, at the horizon, so I'm going to just take a softer pastel and um, reinforce that nice pink glow. Also breaking up that uh, tree line so that it's not so straight and regular. Make it feel a little more organic. Alright, so there we have our sky. Next thing that we're going to do then is work our way forward and we're going to start at the back and come um, towards our foreground. And that allows me to remind, that reminds me that I need to keep um, We keep the, uh, what, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Depth. I want to keep that feeling of atmospheric pers perspective. So I'm going to start in the distance with this really nice bright yellow. I'm going to use a, a uh, it's not, it, I might actually go lighter, but for now I'm going to stick with this one. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to shout. That means I'm going to press down pretty hard. You won't see the layer underneath. And I have to feel confident in my mark here because I need it to be perfectly straight and level at the, where the land meets that distant uh, tree line. And I'm going to just, well, let's poke it in and then we'll pull the uh, bare trees out again. And see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of poking a couple of marks so that we have this area in behind this area. And now before I forget, because I don't want to forget, I'm going to just come back and redo those trees. That was easier than trying to be perfect. Alright. Okay, so I've got that layer. We've got what I call the dirt, because it's a different color. So now I feel comfortable putting in some um, of those yellows, but I'm going to just reinforce some of uh, those dirt colors. This is a mauve, so I'm going to just kind of skip over some of those pink areas. Um, and I am shouting, right? So where I'm pressing pretty hard here. And I come up to this area here, which is the water. And I want to put in the water, and it's kind of probably reflecting this middle section. So let's go ahead and take that blue. And again, shout and make a, a, a firm mark with a, a flat and level top edge. And that is what's going to allow us to, um, oh, that's too, that's dark. That's what's going to allow us to feel that, um, that this is more of a marshy area. Because if I was kind of wobbly with my line, it would look more like hilly terrain. Alright, so let's move closer to us. I'm going to just reinforce that what I like to call the dirt. This is another purple. I like to add the purple before I come in with those yellows because the yellows that's the that'll be the final layer. So I'm building up to the final layer so that my final layer will be more interesting color wise. 
again, this is, you know, we're still on the ugly stage. If you're still with me, thank you for sticking with me because it, I promise you that once I get past that ugly stage, then things start to come together. So now I'm going to uh, increase the color by adding those gold, those nice golds. Here's a darker value, and I'm going right over that foundation pathway. Notice what I've done, though. I have horizontal marks here, and I've now switched my marks to create a variety of directions, but mostly they're going uh, horizontal, because now we can start to add detail here. And as we go into the distance, we are going to um, add some other colors. Here's kind of a greenish yellow. I like that. So let's pull some of that up in here. We have to have a nice transition when we get to this area. When we come about mm, quarter, three quarters of the way down, that's when I start to shift from a, a horizontal mark to that more vertical mark. Once, I still need a color for this one. Let's see. Let's add a little bit of a little bit of green in here. Uh, once I get to the point where I have a layer of pastel over the entire painting, which I do now, that's where I'm to the point where I have to decide. Okay, do I like it kind of? Um, abstracted or do I want to go with more detail and usually what I'll do is I'll step away from the painting think about it and then I'll come back and I'll finish so let's just take a minute I'm gonna come right back and we'll add those finishing touches so we can sign it okay always take a few minutes when you get to this stage of your painting and don't rush the end I always used to rush the end and you know taking time to slow down at the end is really gonna be helpful for you. So, since I did that, what I realized is a couple things I wanted to adjust. I like this pink up here because it matched or it talked to the underpainting, but now that I've gotten all the golden grasses, I feel like I need to have a little bit more of a golden glow, so I'm going to change the pink to a pale yellow. And I know that's like a super um, subtle, simple thing, but automatically now this has a better relationship with the golden grasses. The other thing is I looked a little bit more carefully at my photo and while I'm not um, tied to my reference photo, I'm, I'm more than willing to make changes. A lot of times it will give us clues. And what, I saw some water back there and I really liked how it just kind of made I just like that uh, little bit peak of the water right there. So I just took a lighter blue and did uh, one little line. The other thing I, ne I need is I need some more light on the trees because right now they're kind of flat. I don't really see a lot of uh, light and I also need a little more foliage for those sky holes because I don't want them to look like I stuck them on top. And then I want to develop the grasses, but I really want to keep it fairly simple. So what I did was I sprayed the grasses in the trees with rubbing alcohol that I have in a spray bottle. And I just hold it about a foot away from the painting and lightly spray it. It takes a couple minutes to dry. Uh, sometimes you'll get little spots, but usually for me I don't mind because it gives a feeling of texture. Um, and I will use it because it kind of locks the darker colors in place so I can come back and get a little bit more suggestion of texture as I um, go over those areas. I used to use, and if you've um, followed me before, I used to like to use Blair uh, Workable Fixative Low Odor and that is no longer being manufactured so I've had to find uh, other options and so I have kind of settled on using um, rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle and actually it works pretty good. I still like the Blair better but I'll take it. Um, anyways that's what I that's what that spray is for so the continuous spray bottle you can get them on Amazon I find works better because it just 
yeah, it keeps a continuous spray going. So while I've been talking, I've added just a few touches, little marks of color, not everywhere, so it's a lighter, uh, warmer value just to say, oh, okay, some sun is hitting here. I also mentioned earlier that I saw some light on those tree trunks there. Um, they're kind of grayish blue. So let's go ahead and hit the side of some of these trunks here with that with a little bit of a lighter grayish blue. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, some of them feel a little purple to me, so that's always good when you can use colors <clears throat> that you've used other places in the painting and put them, you know, in other areas, move that same color around, you get better color harmony. Um, let's, let's address the sky holes a little bit better, kind of cover up some of those there. So they're just a little bit more subtle. Okay, what else did I want to do? I sprayed this, so I need to uh, come back to reinforce those grasses. So I'm going to, let me just show you what I mean. Now that I can go over that area where I sprayed the fixative, see how the pastel kind of skips over? You can still see those dark areas uh, underneath, but they're just kind of subtly under there. And I get a little bit more texture. So I'm just going to keep building um, those layers. I'm using the same pastels that I already had, and I'm not painting single blades of grass just yet. I'm also starting to see a, a little bit of feeling of green in there, and I think that just will help make this whole area more interesting. Remember, we want to get the viewer through this grass so that they don't feel like they're caught up on, on a fence, right? I see some light grasses right at the water's edge. So I'm using the side of the pastel to get a different type of mark where I see those light areas. I also see some light right underneath the trees. Just using the side of the pastel so it looks kind of like grass. Um, there's some lighter areas right in here. This is kind of a yellowy green. If I use a color in the distance, I don't want to use the same exact stick in the foreground. So I try to pick up a different stick. And I don't know if this is too bright. Too, this is more of an orangey yellow. But it does kind of help break up this area. Now. This is the, t the moment of truth where I decide, and this is a personal decision always, do I want to leave it kind of sketchy like this, or do I want to go in and paint individual blades of grass? And a lot of times I'll just try, and then I'll see, you know, how it looks. But I don't want to get too carried away with too, mi too much, um, too many blades of grass. And then it just gets too fussy. But everyone has their own level of finish or detail that they are personally comfortable with. And so what I like about this process, these six steps, is allow you to gradually build up your painting and take it to a place where you are comfortable. You know, you might be comfortable with leaving it as it is, or you might say, nah, I need more. I need it to look more like, you know, more realistic, and, and you can spend some time doing that. Uh, but this... This process allows you to uh, make that decision. A lot of times what I'll do at the very end is I'll take out those um, underpainting pastels. So remember I had pinks, red violets rather, in this foreground. So if I take them out and just kind of do some scribbling right through my grasses, I'm bringing the underpainting back to the surface and I'm just knitting it all together and that's also a good way to finish your painting. So this demo is not as much about finishing a painting as it is starting and what process we can use or what technique we can use to get a painting started. Um, jumping into the new year, starting with a simple process is something that I like to do and I, I return to this method over and over again. I think this is a good stopping point for this particular demo. 
again, if you like this, if you like my style of teaching, you really enjoy watching this demo, join us over on Patreon. The, the uh, information is in the description of this video. I'd love to have you give it a try. And, of course, I'm going to try to be better at coming back here on YouTube and sharing with you more this year. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sticking to the end. Let's go paint.